you are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. The Breastplate of Justice, 42. Raise Your Heart to God. Meditation. We are traveling to an unknown land, to the land of eternity. Let us hope of endless delight. Our life on earth is a voyage to that country. The mistake into which most young people fall is that they make the journey to eternity in so thoughtless a fashion. You must beware of this folly. Therefore, I exhort you to raise your heart to God daily by means of serious reflection, by means of meditation or mental prayer. You must already have remarked the wide difference which frequently exists among Christians who dwell beneath the same roof tree and form but one family. Unfortunately, one not seldom finds in the present-day Christians who commit sin boldly and even with a sort of pride. But there are, thank God, other Christians who dread nothing so much as sin. Whence arises this difference? In the case of the latter, from the practice of mental prayer. In that of the former, from the thoughtless manner in which they live their daily life and never reflect upon higher and eternal things. Truly, it is not to be wondered at if a man who lives in this manner veers about like a weathercock with every wind that blows. He does not live quite like a Christian, nor quite like a heathen. He indeed believes in heaven and hell, but in a cold and careless manner. How does it happen, on the other hand, that the true, earnest Christian stands as fine amid evil examples as an oak which has braved a hundred winters? Let us discover his secret, a secret more valuable by far than the secret of the alchemist. The true Christian also has his temptations. He has to fight with his own concupiscence, with the world, with the devil. But he is not careless and thoughtless. On the contrary, he is watchful and serious. In prayer, he meditates upon religious truths, and by the grace of God, his faith becomes fervent and lively so that he does not fall into grievous sin, but makes steady progress in the way of perfection. The bad and thoughtless Christian, on the other hand, boasts that he believes like any good Christian, but he does not live up to his profession. For this reason, one of the saints used to say, In my opinion, these bad Christians ought to be confined in an asylum for idiots. For how can a sensible, reasonable man believe in heaven and hell, and yet go on sinning. St. Alphonsus Liguori says in his Devout Reflections, We are not created for this earth. The end for which God has placed us in the world is this, that by our good works we may merit eternal life. The end is life everlasting. Romans 1.22 And therefore St. Eucarius used to say that the only affair that we should attend to in this life is eternity that is, to gain for ourselves a happy eternity and escape a miserable one. The business for which we work is eternity. If we make sure of success in this business, we shall be happy forever. If we fail in it, we shall be forever miserable. Happy he who lives with eternity always in view, with the lively faith that he must shortly die and enter into eternity. The just man liveth by faith, says the Apostle, Galatians 3.11. It is faith that makes the just live in the grace of God, and that gives life to their souls by detaching them from earthly affections, and reminding them of the eternal goods which God holds out to those who love him. St. Teresa used to say that all sins had their origin in a want of faith. Therefore, in order to overcome our passions and temptations, we must frequently revive our faith by saying, I believe in the life everlasting. I believe that after this life, which for me will quickly finish, there is an eternal life, either full of delights or full of torments, which will be my lot according to my merits or demerits. St. Augustine also was wont to say that a man who believes in eternity, and yet is not converted to God, has lost either his reason or his faith. O oh, eternity, these are his words, he that meditates upon thee and repents not, either has no faith, or, if he has faith, he has no heart. 
In reference to this, St. John Chrysostom relates that the Gentiles, when they saw Christians committing sin, called them either liars or fools. Raise your heart to God by meditation, by mental prayer. Only in this way will your hope, as well as your faith, be maintained and kept from degenerating into presumption or despair. The sinner often resembles the ostrich, which lives in the sandy deserts of Africa. When it is pursued, it buries its head in the sand, that it may not perceive its pursuer, and imagines itself to be unseen. All too late it discovers its mistake, when the fatal bullet has inflicted a mortal wound. After a similar fashion do sinners act. They reflect not upon the mighty hunter, death, and refuse to think of him. But this does not prevent him from coming, and his cruel arrow fails not to reach its mark. How terrible a thing it is thus to trifle with death. Wherefore, raise your heart to God, raise it frequently to him, every morning and evening at least. Raise your heart to God in the morning, by making a firm resolution to avoid this or that besetting sin, and to overcome our predominant passion. Raise it to God in the evening, by repenting of your sins, by meditating on death, judgment, heaven, and hell, and by resolving to lead a more holy, a more virtuous life. Pray every night for that grace of perseverance. Lord, thou hast made this wondrous soul all for thyself alone. O send thy sweet transforming grace to make it more thine own.